There it is. 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 <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how to extend complicated backgrounds in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to take a portrait that has a pretty tight crop and extend the background. This is something we do super often, especially when you're trying to make like a portrait type image. Maybe you want to put it as a horizontal banner or as a website or top of your Facebook profile, whatever you have. Now, if someone's just photographed, like there's buildings and stuff like that behind them, like they're in the outdoors, then it gets like not impossible, but almost impossible because basically either you have to find a similar image or hand paint an entire background, which is very difficult. So we still have a somewhat complicated background, but we're gonna show you how to use simple tools like the brush tool to go ahead and extend this. Now, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can download this sample image on flurn.com. Just click right up here for that link, boop, 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 and you'll be able to follow along. So here's our photograph today. And as you can see, the background is a little bit complicated. We've got these circle figures here. You can see it's a little bit dark on the top and it gets a little bit lighter as it goes down. And of course our subject is going right to the edge. So what happens if we wanna extend this? Well, I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool and we're gonna click and drag from the left to the right because I wanna do a decent extension on this. Like we wanna have this maybe be applicable for a web banner. So we're just gonna bring that right to the right and I'm gonna hit that checkbox right up there. Okay, now what I wanna do in this case, because we have a few different layers, let's go ahead and sketch up or mark up how we're gonna approach this. So we obviously have our background, okay? The background color that just goes from this red, it kinda gets darker up here and darker down there. And then we have these other shapes that we basically have to recreate. So when I do something like this, I wanna think about it in 3D. So I'm gonna start with the thing that's furthest back, in which case this is just this background here. And then we're gonna move forward, which would be these red dots. And then if we needed to do any work with our subject, which in this case, we don't really have to, so that's nice, uh, then I would work on my subject. Now, I also gotta say that we're extending our background this way, which is much easier than extending it this way. And the reason is because there's no information here. So basically we would have to hand paint an entire new shirt on our subject. We're gonna stick with this because it's something that I think we can all do and definitely a situation that we're gonna run into. So let's go ahead and start with, if you just have your background layer, we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna hit B for the brush tool. So the brush tool is gonna be our key tool for this, uh, for this effect. So B for the brush tool, we're just gonna right click and we're gonna make sure that we're choosing a large brush and our hardness you want to be set at zero. Now you can also hold control and option and then click and drag to the right to the left to change your brush size. If you're on a PC, it's gonna be control alt and right click and drag. Now what I wanna do is actually grab some of these colors from the background. So with my brush tool still selected, we're gonna hold alt or option and you're gonna see a little eyedropper here Go ahead and click, which is gonna sample that color, and then we can start painting this color in. Now, right now, my flow and my opacity are both set to 100%. And my goal here is basically just to go ahead and paint in with this color, and then we're gonna focus on the gradient in just a second. So let's go ahead and paint this in. There we go. And you can see it's a huge brush, so it does take a little bit of time. If your computer is starting to slow down a little bit, that's totally okay, because it's a huge brush. Now let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit smaller here. I just wanna get the background, like basically the majority of that color, we just wanna lay that down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you can see I covered up my photograph itself a little bit. That's actually totally okay. At this point, I'm not worried if I cover my subject up or my cover my photo. We're gonna use layer masks to remove that later. For now, we just wanna make it sure it looks as natural as possible. So next we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna hit B for the brush tool. Let's choose a large soft edge brush again. Let's go ahead and sample this slightly darker color by holding Alt or Option. And now I wanna bring my flow down. We're gonna bring our flow down to about 20%. So you can hit Shift 2 on your keyboard or you can just click and drag right here or type in 20%. Now, 
with our flow of 20%, I got to go over an area a couple of times in order for that effect to really start to, you know, lay down that color. So this is a nice way to kind of like have a smooth buildup effect. Okay. And this is exactly what we want for this type of gradient because we want it to be a little bit variable. In this case, I don't really want to use just like the gradient tool. You could, but I want it to look more photographic. And because I can add in some of this variation with my brush tool, it's going to look a little bit more like a photo and a little bit less like we just did it in Photoshop, which we did, but we don't want it to look like we did that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this color here and we're going to start bringing some in some of that color in as well. So any cues you can get from the background of your original photo, it's a really good idea to start pulling these in if possible. There we go. And my goal here is just to create a photo that or a background here that really doesn't look like it was done in Photoshop. I want maybe add a little bit of vignetting. You can see I took this dark corner here, just kind of adding it in here. There we go. And with a low flow, we have a large amount of variation that makes it very easy to do this sort of effect. Okay. Now, if you paint a little bit too much, like if I'm like, oh, you know what, that corner is a little bit too dark. It's not a big deal. All you have to do is sample this color right next to it. So again, hold alt or option sample there and just paint a little bit and it'll lighten that up. Fantastic. So you can see that does a really nice job filling in the background, definitely painted over top of our subject, but you're going to see in just a second, that's not actually that big of a deal. So we laid down our background and now it's time to work on those circles because we do have all these other elements in this background. So we're going to start with these lighter colored circles here. Now you can see they're not actually perfect circles. Uh, they're a little bit more irregular. So I want to use an irregular tool, something like my regular old lasso tool to create these. So I'm going to hand draw these circles. There we go. And right now this is just selections, right? That's all I'm doing here is making selections. And then I can just fill these selections in, in just a little bit. And the nice thing about doing all this on, you know, different layers is I could add or remove as many of these as I want at any point too. Like if I'm like, oh, that was too many. I can just erase some of these away very easily. All right. There we go. So you can see that was just selections. Now we want to make a new layer. So every time we create a new effect, we want that to be on a new layer so we could layer mask it out or erase it if we need to. So now that we have those selections, we're going to go back with our brush tool. We're going to hold alt or option. Okay. And then grab this color. So same color here. We're going to go to edit down to fill. And I'm going to go to my foreground color. So I grabbed this pink here, made it my foreground color, and now we're going to fill with that. So let's hit OK. All right, let's hit Control or Command D to deselect. And we can see getting there, but it doesn't quite look realistic, does it? Uh, we've got a couple more things to do. So the next thing we want to do is apply a blur to this layer. So we're going to right click here. We're going to go to Convert to Smart Object. Because anytime you do a blur, it's a good idea to create a smart object first. That way you can change your blur if you don't like it. So we're going to go to filter. We're down going to go to blur and I'm going to go to one of my favorite blurs. It's called the box blur. And this actually creates a more photographic blur than the Gaussian blur. In my opinion, it tends to look a little bit more realistic. Okay. Now my goal here is to kind of match the blur from this original photograph. So I can change my radius here. Let's hit OK. I think that actually looks pretty nice. This is the original photograph and these are the things that I just made. Check this out. If I want to change the blur, all I have to do is double click right here where it says box blur and I can change this at any time. OK, so it's very, very easy for me to get in here and make changes, but I think the original actually looks pretty good. So we have our first effect down. Now it's time for the larger circles. Let's go ahead and make these layers invisible. Uh, this looks a little bit more like a perfect circle to me. So we're going to go ahead and create some of those and at different sizes. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. 
I'm gonna use my elliptical marquee tool here and just hold the shift key down and make a few of these. I'm not making them absolutely perfect circles, but there we go, a little bit closer than what we had before. All right, just hit undo there. Fantastic. And I'm trying to space these out like fairly evenly so I don't have too much competition with my shapes from before. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here and start painting it in. Now I could do a fill, but I want these to be maybe just a little bit of variation in here. So I'm gonna just paint them in with my brush tool. You can hit Control or Command H to hide your selection and that'll give you a good idea of what you're actually doing. Now I'm gonna click on my color, maybe make it a little bit brighter cause like this one I didn't really see, that one I didn't really see. And this is also just gonna help give a tiny bit of variation in there, which should help this effect look a little bit more realistic. Cool, well that looks pretty good. Now turning this off and on, I wanna add a blur to this. So we're gonna right click, convert to smart object, then we'll just do the same thing. Filter, down to blur and to box blur. And we're gonna choose, there we go. Something right about here looks actually pretty good. So let's hit okay. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and turn these layers off. Here's what we have with our start. We added the very back. Then we're coming a little bit more forward, adding more detail, a little bit more, and then a little bit more. So now what we need to do, and keep in mind, of course, every image is gonna be super different, but my goal now is to get these not visible over top of my subject. So we're gonna hold shift, click all of these layers and group them together by hitting Control or Command G. So I can just turn them all off and on. Now I can add a layer mask and just simply paint black on my layer mask. This is just with my brush tool. I'm just gonna paint black on my layer mask right over top of my subject making sure that it's visible right at the edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in there. Fantastic. So I want my subject to be completely visible and then it's gonna be invisible right there at the edge. Oh, painted black when I meant to paint white. So if you paint black on your layer mask, it'll make it invisible. White will make it visible. Fantastic. So we're looking pretty good and we're actually almost done. The last thing I wanna do is add a little bit of noise to this background. If I zoom in to my original background, you're gonna see a little bit of noise here, which just makes the effect look more like a photograph. Now, if I zoom into one of these parts that I made, you can see there's no noise here. And so it really doesn't look like a photograph. We wanna add the noise levels from our effect to the noise levels of the background. So it's actually really easy to do. We're gonna go ahead and take this entire group. I'm gonna right click and we're gonna convert this to a smart object. So now the whole group itself is a smart object that I can turn off and on and I can add filters like noise. So let's go to filter down to noise. We're gonna go to add noise. There we go. And zooming in here, we can see the amount of noise. So obviously we don't wanna go that high because it won't look realistic. You can just use your up and down arrows here to add or remove more noise. Let's see like 2% or you can just type this in. There we go, 3%. My goal here is to try to find the bare border between my subject, see the noise here, my subject's background. I'm scrolling over to try to find if I can see a difference. Like at 10, it's very obvious where that difference is, right? It's like here, so that level of noise is more subtle than here. But at 3%, that actually looks pretty much the same. So let's hit OK. And now the level of noise really makes it look photographic and blends perfectly with our subject. So obviously I did a crazy huge background extension and we kind of have a little bit of like a fun background in general. But if you wanted to extend it over here, you could do that as well. Also, by the way, you can double click here and open your entire smart object and let's say I wanted to remove these like white dots, I could simply remove those, save this and close it out, and then it's gonna automatically update on my other document. 
There we go. And you can see all those are now in fact removed. And that's how we extend complicated backgrounds in Photoshop. If you wanna get more free tutorials every single week, go ahead and subscribe by clicking up here. YouTube thinks you're gonna like these videos. And if you wanna learn more complicated tasks like retouching and compositing, click right up here to learn a little bit more about Flurn Pro. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.